Certain Pokémon are notorious for their lack of competitive viability. These are your Regigigas, your Slackings, and your Sunfloras. But there are some rare times in competitive Pokémon where the game devs decided that it was time to make a change and buffed one of these Pokémon to the extent that they became staples of competitive play. Today we'll be exploring these few Pokémon that had a major glow up in VGC. If you enjoyed this video at any point in time or learn anything new, be sure to leave a like and subscribe because I'm on my way to 100,000 subscribers. And you might just want to sub now because after this video you can check out my playlist full of great competitive discussion videos just like this one. But with that out of the way, let's just get right into it. Starting off with a fun Gen 4 Pokemon, we have Drifblim. Drifblim is that genre of Pokemon where they give it the fattest HP stat you've ever seen but then give it the defenses of a balloon. Wait. Anyways, as a ghost and flying type, Drifblim isn't particularly great defensively, and despite having great offensive typings, it can't really back them up with the stats to use them. It's basically hard locked into being a support Pokemon due to the tools it's been granted, being will o -Wisp to cut attack stats and Tailwind to give the team a speed boost. But there have always been better options for this role. Drifblim would be a liability for most teams. It does have some great abilities in Flare Boost and Unburden, though. That being said, Drifblim was a mediocre and overlooked Pokemon up until Generation 7, where the stars aligned to give Drifblim just the right conditions to be good. With the introduction of the Tapus and their terrain setting abilities, Driplin was finally able to make full use of its tools. There was a new set of items introduced in the seeds. The Psychic, Electric, Grassy, and Misty seeds would provide a defensive boost based on what seed the user consumed once the respective terrain was activated. Because of this, Driplin found itself being paired with Tapu Lele and many 2017 teams. The Psychic seed would get activated by Psychic Terrain, granting Driplin a 50% boost in its special defense stat and increased its speed stat because of the ability Unburden, which doubles the user's speed if it loses an item. This meant that Driplin was able to outspeed basically every Pokemon in the game while still being able to invest in its bulk to become very difficult to KO. The ghost typing meant that it wasn't able to be faked out turn 1 and reliably set up Tailwind for a partner. Typically, Psychic Terrain would block this anyway, but because of its flying typing, it meant that Psychic Terrain wouldn't protect the Driplin. Not only was it great speed control, but with Will-O-Wisp it could actually reduce damage from powerful physical attackers like Garchomp and Kartana. Additionally, with no item, Driplin was able to occasionally run Acrobatics, which was a 55 base power flying move that doubles in power if the user has no item. While Driplum didn't get a ton of results in majors due to the players eventually swapping over to Mandibuzz, the generation did lead to Driplum having a major spike in usage at the beginning of the format and remaining a wild card for a few years. <laughs> LeBron James, The Bronze Age, Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant? Yeah, Durant wasn't a Pokemon that many people had on their VGC bingo cards going into Generation 8. But due to Dynamax mechanics, it became a staple of early 2020 teams prior to Pokemon Home releasing. Durant on paper has some okay stats with 109 attack and 109 speed. Its physical bulk is acceptable, but its special defense is really low. Its high speed for the format allowed for Durant to threaten a lot of Pokemon after Dynamaxing with 100% accurate Hustle moves. Oh yeah, that's a pretty important mechanic to explain. Hustle is an ability which grants the user a 50% boost to their physical attacks across the board, at the cost of making all moves have 80% of their base accuracy. The big thing about Dynamax, well besides the Pokemon getting big, is that Dynamax moves cannot miss. This means that for 3 turns Durant was able to click a 195 base power max steel spike, max flutter by, max rockfall, and max quake. This meant that Durant was the face of hyper offense next to Whimsicott, being able to one shot the likes of Charizard, Togekiss, and just about any non-Dynamax Pokemon. Durant went on to do very well in many early 2020 tournaments and only truly fell off once faster and more powerful Pokemon were added via Pokemon Home and the DLC, which largely invalidated its role in the metagame. But Durant truly is the greatest example of a metagame being warped by limited options. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna do all three of these dudes in one go because they basically all received the same buff. Pelipper, Torkoal, and Gigalith in Generation 7 received Drizzle, Drought, and Sandstream respectively. Because of the limited Pokedex in VGC 2017, Game Freak decided to buff all of these mediocre Pokemon by granting them the weather setting abilities and allowing for weather wars to exist despite the usual weather mons not being legal. Pelipper was originally one of the weakest flying types in the game with mediocre stats across the board. Its bulk was okay, but its special attack stat couldn't be fully utilized due to its low speed. After gaining access to Drizzle, Pelipper became the only weather setter with access to Tailwind, allowing for Swift Swim partners to be even faster and difficult to deal with. Its water moves also became far more threatening, with it now being able to click Hydro Pump and Scald with 50% more power behind it. Pelipper went from a super forgettable Pokemon in Generation 3 to a legitimately difficult Pokemon to switch in on and play around. Torkoal, also from Generation 3, was arguably one of the worst fire types in VGC. It had great bulk with 70 HP and 140 defense, but its low speed and base 85 special attack meant that none of Torkoal's moves hit all that hard. That 
all changed with Drought. Not only was Torkoal now able to boast the most threatening eruption under Trick Room in the game, but it enabled a whole new archetype of play all on its own. Torkoal's low speed comboed with Drought was what created the archetype known as Sun Room. This is a team that focuses around having Torkoal set Sun for the rest of the team, allowing it to threaten the sweep under Trick Room while enabling a partner Chlorophyll Grass type to have double speed when the sun is up. Leaning against Sun Room teams is one of the most stressful things you can do in VGC. Having to figure out if the opponent will lean into spamming Sleep Powder with a fast Venusaur or Lilligant, or go for Trick Room to let Torkoal sweep, is a pretty tough call. If they lead off with Lilligant Torkoal, they can just use the move after you to let Torkoal move on Lilligant's turn and hit your Pokemon with a super fast and powerful eruption under Sun. So really, there's no winning there. Torkoal's buff was arguably the biggest jump in power that a single Pokemon has ever received and remains a staple of EGC to this day, being the best Sunsetter beyond Groudon. Finally, the last of the weather trio is Gigalith. To be honest, Gigalith getting Sandstream did help it out a ton and allowed for Sand teams to function in VGC 2017, but there was really no competing with Tyranitar once that Pokemon became available, which is why you really don't see Gigalith that much anymore. That being said, it was still a force to be reckoned with in 2017, threatening powerful Continental Crushes, Heavy Slams, and occasionally providing the team with support with Wide Guard. Sand granted a 50% boost in Special Defense, so Gigalith was able to double down on its bulk by also running an Assault Vest or using the bulk to reliably get off a weakness policy. Gigalith in the long run ended up being the weakest of the three Pokemon buffed in Generation 7, but at least it's got a sick shiny, right? I don't know. I'm still a believer. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for. Okay, so about a week ago, I released a video where I was discussing the weakest restricted legendary Pokemon in VGC, and I got a ton of comments asking why Regigigas wasn't on the list. I can actually address that now. One, Regigigas is not a restricted legendary. Two, it's good. That might surprise some of you, and it surprised me too, because I was a Regigigas denier for a really long time. But in Generation 8, the stars aligned and made Regigigas one of the scariest Pokemon that you could face off against. And all of this is because of Weezing. See, in Generation 8, Weezing and its new Galarian form were granted the new ability of Neutralizing Gas. This ability simply turns off all abilities on the field, except for Calyrex's for some reason. We hate that guy. This means no Intimidate, no Chlorophyll, no Intrepid Sword, and no slow start. Yeah, something you'll find about many of the best Pokemon is that their playstyles typically revolve around their ability in some way. Venusaur can't use fast sleep powder if it doesn't have chlorophyll, Incineroar can't eat hits as well if it doesn't have intimidate, Zacian only hits like a Ford F-150 going 89 miles per hour instead of a semi-truck going 100 miles an hour, and Regigigas has the exact opposite issue. It's bad when its ability slow start is active. This ability halves Regigigas' speed and attack for 5 whole turns, making it dead weight and nearly useless in every battle. When you flip the switch and turn off every ability, not only do other Pokemon get worse, but Regigigas gets better, especially in Dynamax. Regigigas was able to double its HP and spam Life or boosted max moves for three whole turns. It even run Giga Impact to absolutely annihilate Pokemon and one-shot them off of Max Strike. This would lower the speed of the Pokemon around them, allowing for the partner Weezing to taunt and stop Pokemon like Venusaur from being able to go for Sleep Powder on Regigigas and shutting the whole team down. Regigigas had a bunch of results in 2021, not the least of which was its second place finish at the Players Cup 2, being piloted by David Carrere. Yeah, Regigigas was a legitimate threat for Generation 8 VGC, and it's likely still going to be really good without Dynamax once it returns, as long as Weezing comes with. Weezing may allow Slacking to do something similar in VGC in Generation 9, with it having similarly busted stats and a bad ability, but we can only wait and see. But those were some bad Pokemon that ended up becoming good. Let me know what you thought about the video in the comment section down below, and leave a like if you enjoyed. If you want some bonus content, be sure to check out my Patreon page to support the channel. For just $1 a month, you can see your name up here, and vote on what Pokemon I use on my teams when I drop those videos. And for $5 a month, you can check out my team builders where I work with top players in VGC to make bad Pokemon work. All these people on screen have already supported my work, and you can too. You can also just become a YouTube member if you want to go that route. Or just subscribe, please. We're almost at 100,000. I, I, can, I can taste it. Anyways, with that, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.